like to call to order the Board of Education meeting in the Lammersville Unified School District, regular meeting of November 6, 2019. Um, please note that this meeting is being recorded, and if you would, please turn off all electronic devices. Um, we have some students from Hanson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Oh, you want to do the yeah, the Hanson. Okay, if we could invite um, Hanson up, Principal Pacheco. Thank you, Acting President Lampel, members of the board, Dr. Nicholas. I'm excited to be here to share with you some of the things that we've done so far this year. Our students at Hanson work very hard. They're very focused and diligent on their work in the classroom, and the teachers do a really great job of balancing that those activities that are rigorous in the classroom with hands-on activities that they can do and things they experience and make memories for years to come. So I wanted to just share with you some of those things and activities that they've done so far. Our third grade students just recently went on a field trip to the Manteca Unified School District farm where they had an ag venture experience. They learned about different machinery. They had presentations on healthy living. They visited some farm animals. They came back very excited, all smiles, ready to go again next year, and they absolutely loved it. Our fourth grade students just had a walk through California, kind of an on-site field trip, and Mr. Pombo was um, there with me, and it was fun to walk through and experience that, where we, they have a group of presenters that come through, and they tell stories that represent California history. The students uh, rehearse parts, and they come to school dressed in costumes and they become, you know, experts on Pueblos or experts on missions. And so they have the opportunity to sit in the expert seat and share. And then the storyteller acts out different parts of California history. And I learned a few things that I <laughs> did not remember. Didn't know that California had a Russian colony in 1812. And now I, now I know. So that was a lot of fun. It's a great way to present history when the kids are excited and they get to experience that. Our middle school uh, team led by Mrs. Parmar here, um, went on a walking field trip to the Mountain House water treatment plant. And so the purpose of that was to have them see how the water gets from the Delta to us here in Mountain House. Um, I guess the other purpose served was uh, two and a half miles walking from here to the treatment plant, and Mrs. Parmar got quite a bit of exercise that week. <laughs> <laughs> And then the other way that we have students doing hands-on activity is through our Genius Hour on Fridays. And this is just um, showing you some of the Rube Goldberg projects that we had this year where students studied the inventor and how he came up with different machines and contraptions uh, to solve everyday problems just in a convoluted different kinds of ways. And they were challenged with doing the same thing. Um, and they had a lot of fun doing that and going through that project. And then. Another one, Genius Hour, we had students who were tasked with building a future invention that could solve some kind of a problem. And so one of the students here was building a double-decker car because his problem was they couldn't fit the entire family in one vehicle. So he wanted to solve that problem. The other student was helping him solve the problem of housing this car by building a garage that traveled with the car because the car that they built was very expensive and it had a lot of gadgets and they didn't want it to get stolen. So that was how they solved that problem. Um, we also have here some students. Last year they came to share with the board that they had formed a jump team as a result of their Genius Hour project. And they had competed and with the help of the, how the high school program did very well and were invited to an international leadership conference. And so they were very grateful for the support of the board. I wanted to bring them back so that they could share with you their experience and then show their gratitude to the board as well. So I'm gonna bring up three, I wanna say four, three or four. 
four of the five have moved on to the high school, but they're going to come back and continue to coach our seven and eight team. Um, one of ours is still an eighth grader, so they're going to continue working together. So here they are with their presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, I just, first of all, wanted to thank you for letting us go on this amazing trip. I'm going to say it was quite a trip. And um, let me start by introducing myself again. My name's Kamisha Agari, and these are my fellow teammates, Pari Sharma, Sahasra, and, and um, Samar. <laughs> and there's my um, amazing chapter advisor, Ms. Parmar. Um, so first, when we first got there, one of the main things we did was the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony is kind of an event that start, um, lets you get to know more about HOSA, like get you comfortable and with what's gonna happen. And one thing that we did was we, like there was many guest speakers and other things like that. And they really helped us like understand, like we got so much more information that we like wouldn't have known if we didn't go to ILC. So there was like many thing, new things that we learned, and so I am very thankful for that. Oh, okay. So one of the other things that we did was um, pin trading, and I don't have my pins with me today, but they're in my room. Um, I think uh, everyone else here does. So pin trading, so every state has their own state pin, and everyone brings their state pin to ILC to trade with other states and hopefully get like a collection of all the states, right? So I think it's actually a really good opportunity because it let us go up to people and start a conversation and learn more about them. And we got to meet a lot of new people and learn about all the cool things they're doing. The workshops are one of the most interesting events of our ILC experience because uh, there are a lot of workshops ranging from topics talking about NASA to uh, beating cancer, and we learned a lot of new things, and we, lear we learned about a lot of opportunities in the IELTS uh, medical field. Oh, okay. Um, and then, obviously, the main part of the conference, which was the competition. So there were, I think, we... Uh, competed in three events. So I and me and Anne competed in prepared speaking. That's an event that involves you to write a five-minute prepared speech on a given topic. Um, Kamish competed in medical terminology, which involved you uh, studying a set of terms and definitions that uh, were really um, hard to learn, and they were about the medical field. And um, the last one, which I think, who did? Samarth, you, Sahasra, and then and Nikita, right? Samarth, Sahasra, and Nikita, who's not re here with us today, they did extemporaneous health poster, which involves you, they give you a topic and information about that, and you have to make a poster uh, that captures all the information under an hour. So I think we learned a lot from competing. Um, I mean, it's really hard to list everything because there's so many things to do, but we learned about um, ourselves a lot too through it, how we can make ourselves a better person, how we can compete better, be more confident. Um, we, and there were so many people there that were competing with us and we were all in the same boat. It wasn't like competitive, like, oh, we're, uh, we're competing with each other, so we're not going to talk to each other. We're going to, you know, we were all really friendly and we learned, uh, we shared our interests and, it let us look at things from different perspectives. So I think it was really cool that we got to go to ILC, such a large scale, and compete there. This trip was not only educational, it was also very fun. We got to learn a lot while having fun in the workshops and trading pins. It was fun to meet new people who also shared our interests about the medical field. After we participated in our competitions, we relaxed by going to the Hosa dance and going ziplining over alligators. We also swam at the pool in the Disney Resort. We also ate great food and enjoyed ourselves at Disney Springs. Okay, so 
as I talked about before, I talked about the opening ceremony. Now I'm going to talk about the closing ceremony because everything comes to an end. Um, so the closing ceremony is basically the grand award ceremony. Um, about 11,000 people come to it. It's really cool. It's really fun. Tons of music, lights, effects, special effects. It's it's fun. And it was honestly, it was truly a great experience seeing like so many people in like so many different states and like meeting so many people, watching them walk up. It like it really felt good that we were able to go to this experience, um, to this event, and we will cherish that forever. As a team, we bonded together. We helped each other learn to share and got to see a, another side of us that we not really never got to. We came out of this trip having a better connection than we ever did. Um, I know that was a whole lot, but in the end, we became wiser and better people and now have an experience we will remember forever. And this trip presented us with the opportunity of learning new things and creating new memories. We will always remember the inside jokes, the cool medical facts, and of course the board, the reason why we were able to have such a magical experience. Thank you. Comments or questions from the board? I have a question. So uh, I think two of you did informational speech presentations, like the five-minute speech. What were the two topics? Oh, um, there was one, one topic. topic. It was define your purpose, and define your purpose was a broad topic. Okay. okay. Yeah, there were multiple sessions. It was really broad. You could do it. One, two, three. Great. Thanks. Great job, guys. Incredible. I, <coughs> I have a question, and if you would each answer it individually. I'm sure that all of you have aspirations in the medical field. Would you mind sharing with us what what those are, what you hope to be? Um, and talking to the mic so the whole community can hear. Um, so I'm not exactly completely sure, but um, <laughs> something that I always wanted to do was become a cardiologist because I, I find the functions of the heart super interesting. And I, although I'm like only a freshman in high school, I really look forward to pursuing my dreams in the medical field. Well, I want to, I want to become a neurologist when I grow up because I'm really interested in the brain and there's so many new things you could learn about it and there's so many new things about the brain that's unknown. To be honest, I don't know what I want to become. I do know that I want to pursue a career in the medical field and I want to work with people and I also want to be able to research and experiment. So. I'm still looking for that dream job. I'm not sure what I want to be yet, but maybe I like l working with little kids, so maybe I want to be a pediatrician. Um, I'm also not sure what I want to do, but I'm thinking of something uh, related to computer science in the medical field because technology is a really big part of the medical field. They um, tie in, they're hand to hand, so that's, that's what I want to be. Thank you, and don't feel bad if you haven't quite decided what you want to do when you grow up. I'm still trying to figure that out myself. <laughs> you, st you stole my line. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you on behalf of Lammersville Unified School District for doing such a fabulous job representing us at this event, and good luck to all of you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank Great. you. <laughs> Roll call, please. Matthew Balzarini. Absent. Ann Bonilla. Present. Colin Clements. Present. Sharon Lampel. Present. David Pombo. Present. Ruxar Mohammed. Present. Great. Are there any approve any corrections or changes to the agenda? There are none. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Okay. Moved by um, Trustee Clements. Seconded by Trustee Bonilla. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, first of all, to the students, if you don't want to stay for our meeting, we will totally understand. You probably have a lot of homework you need to get back to, so we will not be insulted if you leave. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Great job, guys. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to committee reports. Uh, District Advisory Committee has not met since our last meeting. Uh, District English Language Advisory Committee. The next meeting is uh, January 30th at 6.30 p.m. Education Committee. 
The next meeting of the Education Committee is December 3rd at 3.30 here in the boardroom. Okay, Facilities Committee, uh, uh, we, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, we haven't met since the last one. Our next meeting is December 19th at 6.30 here in the boardroom. Thank you. Policy committee? Uh, we've just put forth some new policies for us to vote on, and I don't think we got a second packet yet, so we're waiting. Okay. Safety committee? The next meeting of the safety committee will be on November 20th, not November 13th, as was previously reported, and it will be at 3.30 here in the boardroom. Wellness Committee, please. The Wellness Committee, our next meeting will be here in the boardroom on December 11th at 3.30. Thank you. Governing Board reports. Trustee Bonilla? Nothing to report. Trustee Clements? Oh, students, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <it's fine. laughs> Push me in the right direction. I'm new in this chair. <laughs> sorry about that. So please. Um, yeah, so in the past few weeks, we haven't had too much going on. Just um, we had our senior tailgate, the host uh, haunted hospital. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And we're currently planning for our winter rally, which is next week. And um, I was also able to get the survey for the murals from last time's meeting. And we got that option four, which was one of the um, just the Mustangs that had the most votes. And then option three, which was another one with the Mustangs had the next most votes, and then the last two didn't really have much votes because um, a lot of feedback was that um, many students wanted to see more sports there than rather than just the three that were there. Because I think, I believe there was um, wrestling, volleyball, and basketball shown, but students wanted to see other sports as well. So, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Trustee Bonilla, now. <laughs> I have nothing to report. Okay. Trustee Clements? Um, along with uh, most of my peers on the board and uh, Dr. Nicholas uh, and Noel, of course, um, I attended the San Joaquin County School Board dinner. Um, I also attended the HOSA Haunted Halloween. Um, they did they, Every year they step it up just a little bit, um, and it was, a, it was also a great event. That's all I have to report, Madam President. Trustee Condor? This will take a minute. Um, I was hosted by Principal Wingo at Bethany Elementary for a site visit. Thank you to them. I attended the Festival of Lights at Hanson Elementary. Thank you to the Hanson PTA. I attended Trunk or Treat at Bethany Elementary, Altamont Elementary, and To it. Uh, I also attended the last home football game at Mountain House High School. I participated in the Festival of Lights at Central Park, along with most of the, my fellow board members. Uh, Principal Faubert hosted me at, for a site visit at Mountain House High School. Thank you to Principal Faubert and his staff. Along with most of the board members, as Trustee Clements mentioned, we um, went to the CSBA annual dinner, also along with the majority of the board. We attended the town hall meeting for the proposed cell tower at Mountain House High School. The other school that I went to the trunk or treat was Hanson, now I'm getting down to it. Uh, my wife and I attended two plays at Cuesta Elementary. The kids did a wonderful job as, as did staff. My daughter, granddaughter and I went through the Hosa Haunted Hospital at the high school, and as Trustee Clements mentioned, it was really a wonderful job they did. Scared the bejeebers out of me. Uh, my family and I went to the Lammersville Elementary Harvest Carnival. Principal Yeager hosted me for a site visit at Altamont. Thank you to Principal Yeager and his staff. I, along with Trustee Lampell, participated in the D.A.R.E. graduation at Cuesta Elementary. Principal Pacheco hosted me for a site visit at Hanson Elementary. Thank you to Principal Pacheco and her staff. I was a judge at the annual district-wide spelling bee, and I was very glad that I didn't have to be the one spelling the words. And earlier today, Principal Gonzalez hosted me for a site visit at Wickland Elementary, and I thank he and his staff, and concludes my report. 
So a lot of the same things that my fellow trustees went to, the San Joaquin County School Board's dinner, the Diwali celebration in Central Park, that was just amazing. Um, the Quest of Dare graduation and the town hall meeting about the cell phone towers. So that's the end of my report. So now we are up to public comment. The board shall give members of the public an opportunity to address the board either before <coughs> or during the board's consideration of each agenda item. At a time so designated on the agenda, members of the public also may bring before the board matters that are not listed on the agenda of a regular meeting. The board may refer such a matter to the superintendent or designee or take it under advisement, but shall not take action at that time. The board may place the matter on the agenda of a subsequent meeting for discussion or action. Individual speakers shall be allowed three minutes to address the board on each agenda or non-agenda item. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. And we have received three speaker cards. So Melissa Machado on independent study. Good evening, and thank you, members of the board, um, um, active president, and uh, superintendent, superintendent Dr. Nicholas, for the opportunity to speak to you today. I am here to um, express my concern with the cap limit on the independent study uh, program of three events for the entire school year. Uh, those of you that are parents know how quickly our children grow up, especially once they hit the um, ch uh, school age uh, range and how quickly the years pass. Um, for folks like me that have two working parents in a household, we often, often spend a lot of time at work, away from our kids, away from our families. And many of us don't have opportunity to take time off during the traditional two months of summer Many of us are limited to when we can take our time off away from work. And especially living in this rapidly moving society that we live in today, I believe it's important that uh, we have an opportunity to step away and spend quality time with our families. I believe that if it's done correctly, children can learn about a, a great amount of things that they will never learn and be able to um, hear about in the classroom. Um, I've been able to uh, experience uh, the independent study, and I believe that uh, in the events that I did experience it, my children came along with um, a, a great deal of knowledge and experiences that will last them a lifetime. Uh, I can understand why a limit was put into place. I can understand that there may have been abusers um, of the system, uh, I, can, I can see where that would come from, but I do not believe that our entire district um, should be affected by, uh, by those events um, and that our children shouldn't be short of the, the opportunities to spend time with their, ch their families, to travel, to see the world. And um, I've queried many school districts across the state and none of the, the school districts that I reached out to um, had such a restriction. And um, I just ask this board to please allow for this topic to be placed on a future uh, agenda for uh, a future meeting. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, David, I hope I pronounce your name right, Dakotu. Did I get it right? Uh, you're close. OK. <laughs> Uh, last name's pronounced Dakota. All right, so uh, good evening, uh, President, members of the board. Um, I just like your last speaker, I'm here to discuss the independent travel study, um, uh, BPAR uh, 6158. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank staff um, for reaching out to a lot of us that had spoke at the um, last meeting um, to discuss the policy. Um, I do appreciate that. Um, However, like the last speaker said, I'm also requesting that the that the board direct staff to agendize this for a, a future discussion. Um, 
also doing some research on this, um, what I was, uh, uh, what staff had portrayed to me is that we chose um, Fremont's policy as the policy that we follow. Uh, I work in the aviation industry, um, and I was told that we, but based out of, based upon test scores, well, an airline or an airport that has similar customer satisfaction isn't necessarily the same operation as a larger operation. So I think we need to compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges, which it appears that we've done. Um, Fremont's a significantly larger population, 250,000 people uh, live there. The district is significantly larger. Um, so what I'm requesting is that we look at an analysis of like uh, facilities, or excuse me, like districts um, when we make those, uh, when we do that analysis. And so that's why uh, we're really looking for staff to um, uh, to do that with the future agenda. Uh, so again, I, I thank you guys and, and thank you for staff for, for meeting us with us and, and hearing us out. Thank you. Thank you. Jillian Dakota. Now I know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, President and members of the board and Dr. Uh, Nicholas, Superintendent. Um, again, I'm also here, uh, like last month, uh, speaking in regards to the independent travel study, BPAR 6158. I want to give a big thank you to staff who uh, immediately contacted us last time um, after we spoke and we sat down and had a nice discussion. They listened to me every um, aspect I wanted to cover. They listened. Um, I did ask if it's possible for me to partake in the policy committee meeting if there was availability for uh, citizen par participation and I was told that it's no longer active. Um, so if it's possible, if that committee is still active, I would really appreciate to be invited so I can contribute some thoughts in uh, regards to this policy in particular. Um, it was also my understanding that while I was sharing my thoughts and concerns regarding the current policy that they were being shared with Dr. Nicholas, but that's where it ends. And they won't take any further action unless the board directs staff to reanalyze this policy and take action from it. Uh, so here I am today asking the board to direct staff to open this policy, reanalyze it to neighboring districts um, and to be more in line with their policies. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, one last comment. Um, I did do a petition. I set it up after the last meeting, and I have over 200 uh, signatures of uh, parents here in the district that are also wanting to see a change. Uh, I brought it here with me if you guys would like to see it with their names. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Mrs. Nazarini, thank you. Are there any other... Do you want to comment? No, I just said thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are there any other members of the public who would like to address an item that is not on the regular board agenda? Okay, thank you. Hmm? Please come up to the podium. And if you could state your name, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Durga. Uh, good evening, everyone in the room. So we would like to express our concern regarding uh, installation of at and cell tower in high school, Morton House High School. Uh, as it is weekday, many parents are unable to attend this meeting today. Otherwise, there would have been more than 2,000 parents in this room. So we don't want our kids to go to a school where we have uh, hazardous uh, equipment like cell towers, which causes you know cancer. Right? So I, uh, we would like to request all of you to reject that, you know, cell tower installation in the school. Thank you. And I can tell you that we are in the process of organizing another community meeting that will be on a Saturday. So the parents who do have that horrendous commute will be able to participate. We haven't settled on a date yet, but there will be another meeting. Yeah, thank okay. you. Because we want to hear all the positives and the negatives before we make yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, more than 2,000 parents would, would like to attend this, uh, you know, meeting today because if it is weekday, many people are not able to attend. Yeah, we will publicize the date and time. We haven't decided when that will happen yet. Because there were many incidents, you know, even uh, earlier in one of the schools, there was a cell tower, you know, installed by Sprint, I think, Sprint or Verizon, and which caused, you know, uh, cancer to, you know, 
multiple people like uh, students and teachers as well. So we don't want the same thing to be repeated here in the school. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment? Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on to consent items, we have uh, governing board meeting minutes of the regular meeting of October 16th, 2019. Budget revisions from July through September 2019 and warrant lists from September 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2019. Contracts under $50,000. Ratification of 2019-2020 new hires. Ratification of 2019-2020 resignations. Approval of early graduation petition, Mountain House High School. Updated 2019-20 fundraisers. Ratification of school-sponsored overnight trips and acceptance of a donation. Of, uh, yeah, of a donation. Do we have a motion? Move to approve the consent items. I'll second. Um, I do have a, I don't think it needs to be pulled out, but I do have a comment on one, which is the, um, the approval of early graduation petition. Um, so what the board is being asked to consent is provisional early graduation. Like they still have to finish. As, as I was reading the, the packet, um, some of the comments were, you know, we don't have concerns. They're going to finish these classes. So as long as they finish the required classes, early graduation is approved. Correct. Okay. Anything else? So we have a motion and a second. A motion by Trustee Bonilla, a second by Trustee Clements. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, student provisional vote? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The. Um, sure. You can take over <laughs> my, my, my clerk <laughs> role. <laughs> As acting clerk, I would like to now. <clears throat> Welcome the new hires to the district. Cartier Carter, operations lead. Ruben Martinez, maintenance lead. Sonia McIntyre, administrative secretary. And Shannon Reed, self-contained classroom teacher. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, you were willing to do it this month because the names were easy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. District. District Administrative Report, Superintendent's Report. Yes, I just have a brief report. Uh, we have some good news coming out of uh, this week's Spelling Bee. I want to announce the winners uh, for our District Spelling Bee, who will, and these will, students will be competing at the county level. Um, in the fourth through sixth grade category, we have Ananya Reddy, sixth grader, Siddhartha Senegapali, sixth grader, uh, Sanvi Banerji, fifth grader, and Natalie Navarro, fourth grader. And in the seventh through ninth grade category, we have Ronan Prashanth, uh, Hiba Munad, and oh, I'm sorry, R Rohin is a seventh grader. Rahib Munad is a ninth grader. Ryan Huang is an eighth grader. And Eric Balut uh, is a ninth grader. So the Spelly Bee finals will be held at the SJCOE, San Joaquin County Office of Education, on December 4th. Uh, for fourth through sixth graders, the competition will be at three. For seventh through ninth graders, it'll be immediately after the uh, three o'clock competition. So congratulations to them all. And speaking of congratulations, we have a, a student uh, from Altamont Elementary School who was highlighted in the San Joaquin County's uh, Outlook periodical. Um, so uh, this is a, a family we've grown accustomed to doing very well in the, in the science uh, field. Uh, so this middle schooler from Altamont was recognized uh, in a national competition. Uh, for a project that they took place uh, at, that was uh, the San Joaquin County Science and Engineering Fair last February. Uh, and I hopefully be able to pronounce the project here. It's uh, Jordan Priwira, uh, and his project was called uh, Spira Mirabilis, Improving the Performance of, of the Archimedes Wind Turbine with Logarithmic Spiral Concept. So this seventh grader um, can spell those words too, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, was named to the top 300 in the country at the Broad, Broadcom Masters. And uh, in that competition, there were uh, 2,300 uh, middle school students. So congratulations to him as well. Wow. <laughs> and that's my report. 
and you can explain exactly what all that is, right? <laughs> yes. It might not be accurate, but I can come up with something. <laughs> Restrict enrollment report? Uh, yeah, I'm really excited uh, here. Uh, we uh, put in the uh, the packet 59.55, but we've also grown by five additional students. We're at 59.60 as of today. So we're predicting by mid-year um, uh, 6,000 is a very real possibility. Wow. Okay, professional learning community initiative. Yeah, I'd like to ask our assistant superintendent and associate superintendent to come up. Uh, we have a, a short presentation to kind of uh, follow up on a last uh, board meeting's presentation. Interim board president Lampell, <laughs> trustees, Dr. Nicholas, thank you for having us tonight. Mrs. Sherburn and I are going to continue our conversation about professional learning communities. At our last meeting, we talked about this infographic that represents a three-year PLC process for our schools. You'll note at the top in green, we have mindset, team, and systems. Those are the three tenants that we're following. And then on the left side, you'll see our initiatives that are our tight initiatives, those initiatives that we believe are important enough that we require all schools to follow. And then we have our loose initiatives on the right side, which are initiatives that are growing at different rates at different school sites. And on this graphic, we have our year one plan, which we'll talk about in a minute, and our ongoing projects. So when we talk about mindset, we're, ta we're, we're talking about learning over teaching or learning outcomes for every single student that walks into our building. When we talk about team, we talk about a we're talking about a collaborative culture who works together to serve all of our students. And then when we talk about systems, we talk, we're talking about dedication to results, data used systematically to develop systems that, that shows student achievement and shows results for students so that we can intervene and support students wherever they may be. Now year one, what did we start with? We started with defining PLCs and what they mean to us as a district. We audited our mindset, we audited our teams and our systems to see where we are as a system, to see where we are in the PLC process. And then we set site-based benchmarks. We, when we say benchmarks, we mean we're holding ourselves accountable to a certain timing, to a certain time of year, what we're gonna get done this year, what we're gonna get done next year. And then the 25% plan, that is, how are we using these systems to address the 25% of students that need the most attention in our school district? And then if the school's ready, we're gonna talk about essential standards, formative assessments, and how those will work in each individual school site. Mrs. Sturburn is gonna continue. So going back to where we're at with um, our overall PLC picture, we're going to focus in a little bit more on those initiatives, uh, the tight that are on the, the left side as I look at it, and the initiatives that are loose on the, the other side. Um, as a district, we are also operating as a PLC, and these initiatives fall underneath those same three tenants, the mindset, the team, and the systems. The use of the Venn diagram shows that most of them are overlapping into more than one category that we have there. Also noted in the color coding is the black font um, is used to indicate which initiatives are tight. And you'll see that we have those throughout each of the three um, tenants there, as well as the loose are spread out in between each of the three. So we're working on multiple levels across all three tenants all of the time. In that mindset of developing all means all, we're looking at our reading academies and our blended learning academies, which teachers volunteer to participate in, and that helps them look at how they are working with the um, bottom 25% in those particular areas or meeting the needs of a diverse population. Um, when you look at what is going on in the systems, in particular, we're focusing on the attendance and discipline accountability and having the evaluation observation system working together you, um, and the common assessments and data tools. You see that that team and those systems really overlap and come together a lot because it, it's only in working together that we see administrators, coaching, and teachers improving their practice um, on both sides of that, looking at data together and how does that help improve in instruction. 
Um, and then you see we have our pathways there that are developing, um, our look at equity and how we're doing that and how we're approaching that from that systems approach, as well as then let's look at just the center where we have the overlay of all three tenants there, that RTI tier two model that we've started to implement and we have um, a steps to advance program that is underneath the tight, our PLC development and taking that those steps that are in as part of year one, the walking and talking instruction. And then sites are beginning to develop how they can use walking and talking instruction at their own site in their own modified ways to help them continue to grow as best pertains to their site. What you see on the outside with the thought bubbles are the extra projects that are also going on. Of course, in the district, there are many things that have to happen, just as there are at the school sites, that are not necessarily directly tied to the PLC process, but these projects nevertheless are going on and will impact it. The history social studies curriculum, uh, working on developing better ways to work with English learners, the tech sustainability plan, developing our writing program, continuing with early college, um, work experience, etc. All of that comes back though, whether they're working at the site level or we're working at the district level to the four core questions of a professional learning community. What do we want students to learn? How will we know if they've learned it? What will we do if they didn't learn it? And what will we do if they already know it? So as you see the work that is going on in the schools, you'll see them addressing that at their classroom level, in their grade level teams, across the school site. And then at the district level, we're looking at the same thing is systematically to make sure that we are providing those supports that are available to the school sites to answer those questions. And then we come down to serving the 25%. And this is the teaser slide to help you get ready. We're gonna talk more about this at our next um, uh, presentation to the board. But we wanna highlight here again, you can see that the darkest blue is our overall population with ELA proficiency on state testing at 70% and in math 66% both showing a positive gain there, plus 2% in um, ELA and plus 6% in math overall. And then we have our significant subpopulations that we continue to work on closing the gap. Um, you can see that we have started making significant gains with each one of those populations in both ELA and math. Um, we're gonna tell you more about the programs and the initiatives that we are doing specifically in order to make those gains and things we're looking at in the future um, at our next meeting. Questions? Questions from the board? No? Okay. All right. Thank Great you. job. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Okay, the district maintenance and operations report. <coughs> I was expecting more questions. So that one. <laughs> uh, good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, I attended the all the construction meetings today. Uh, Cordis and the PDC, the warehouse, and uh, this district office. Uh, Cordis are working on getting the buildings watertight. Uh, progress to make a lot of progress on the site. Uh, they're working on the irrigation on the east field, and they're starting to drill the footings for the covered walkways. So they're making good progress. Uh, similar thing with the PDC, trying to get it watertight for the rain comes. The deal, there's only a few punch list items left on this building to complete. Uh, the warehouse, they poured the sidewalks, the curbs, they poured the concrete out in front of the uh, roll-up doors, and they're getting the ground ready for the paving, which hopefully will start next week. And they're also supposed to start the interior framing next week as well. Um, I spent most of the morning yesterday with our radio vendor. We permanently attached the radio tower to this building and the uh, high school repeater was having an issue and uh, there was a bad fitting on the antenna wire. Uh, we replaced it and the output of the repeater doubled so because of the better connection. So we should have very limited coverage issues in the district and that repeater will be able to handle Cordis and, and the schools in the south part of the district as well. Um, yesterday also we had staff training on the new thermostats in this building um, and then I was able to squeeze in a brief one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Faber yesterday at the high school. Um, last Friday was an in-service day for the district. Uh, my staff had uh, CPR and AED training uh, in the afternoon on Friday at Lambertsville in the multipurpose room. 
So thanks to Nurse Amy, she did the training for us, and it was about 20-something people there. And, uh, very informative. Last Thursday, I was able to meet with the new principal at Lammersville. We talked about some custodial and maintenance issues that are going on there. Uh, Wednesday, the 23rd, I was at the cell tower meeting. That was fun. Uh, on Tuesday, the 22nd, uh, Keenan was in the district. They did a chemical. They do an annual chemical inventory of all the – this year it's the high school and next year will be the full district we walked spent the whole day at the high school science rooms art rooms custodial rooms and the maintenance uh, shed in the back by the pool so it took pretty much the whole day um and then on tuesday the 22nd i met with a potential uh grounds company might take over our grounds maintenance for the district i received their proposal and i reviewed it with thor and we're working on potential next steps that we want to take with it um, just a staffing update. We conducted interviews for the lead operations position on Friday the 25th. We conducted interviews for the admin secretary position on Friday the 18th, and she actually started on Monday, so she's been doing training the last three days. And we did interviews for the high school position on the 17th, and that person hasn't started yet. And that's all I have, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from any trustees? Thank you very much. Thank you. Jimmy. Moving on to action items. Um, item A, consider approval of 2019-2020 inter and intra-district transfer request. Move to approve 2019-2020 inter and intra-district transfer requests. Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion by Trustee Clements and a second by Trustee Bonilla. Any questions? Any comments? Student provisional vote? Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Item B, consider approval of contract with a non-public agency for a temporary speech and language pathologist from November 18, 2019 to May 22, 2020. Is there a board re uh, a report on this? Yeah, just briefly, we had a, a person um, who was a staff a member uh, resign. Um, we weren't able to find someone to fill the position, so uh, this NPA would allow us to do it, and the good news is, is it's less less expensive. So that's a rarity. So th oh. good job, Mr. St or Dr. Saylor. Very difficult position to, to hire for. Move to approve consent um, contract with non-public agency for temporary speech and language pathologist from November 18th, 2019, to May 22nd, 2020. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Bonilla, a second by Trustee Pombo. Student mm -hmm. provisional. Uh, I'm sorry, Trustee Clements. Same difference. <laughs> <laughs> Student provisional vote. Aye. Um, board vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Item C, consider approval of governing board resolution number 192008 to approve the pre-tax receivable for CalSTRS. Superintendent's report. Yeah, this resolution allows uh, staff members who want to buy back or, or deduct payroll or related to their CalSTRS, um, and so we recommend uh, ap approval. Move to approve Governing Board Resolution 19-2008 to approve the pre-tax receivable for CalSTRS. Second. Okay, I wish they had something like that when I was a teacher. <laughs> we have a motion by Trustee Clements and a second by Trustee Bonilla. Student provisional vote. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Do we have to do a... Yes. Okay. <laughs> Matthew Balzarini? Absent. Colin Clements? Aye. Anne Bonilla? Present. Aye. Aaron Lampel? <laughs> I'm so used to the roll call. Sorry. Aye. Aye. <laughs> David Pombo? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, item D. Consider approval and adoption of the second reading of updated board policy and administrative regulation 5141.31 immunizations. Staff report? Uh, Dr. Saylor gave a brief presentation last time to explain the uh, update, and we recommend approval. Okay. Move to, to Go ahead. Move to approve the adoption of the second reading of updated board policy and administrative regulation. 5141.31 immunizations. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Pombo, a second by Trustee Clements. Um, student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion passes. Okay. Item E, consider approval to adjourn from regular session to open public hearing on 2019-20 collective bargaining proposals. Move to approve to adjourn to from regular session to open public hearing on 2019-2020 collective bargaining proposals. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Vanilla, a second by Trustee Pombo. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are now in public hearing. Is, are there any comments or uh, from the public on this item agenda on the, um, the what's called the sunshine of um, bargaining proposals for our unions? Okay, so I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and return to regular session. Move to close the public hearing and return to regular session. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Clements, a second by Trustee Bonilla. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item G, consider Approval of sunshining the initial collective bargaining proposals for the 1920 school year as they were presented. There was no public input. Move to approve. Oh, do we have a staff, we have a staff report? <laughs> please, please approve. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve the sunshining of initial collective bargaining proposals for the 2019 2020 school year. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Bonilla, a second by Trustee Pombo. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Happy negotiating. Okay. Item H. Consider approval to adjourn from regular session to open public hearings in this governing board's proceedings for formation of the district's community facilities district number 2019-1 Mountain House School Facilities and Future Annexation Area and for the issuance of bonded and other debt. So moved. Second. Okay, yeah. So we have, okay, move right to that one right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> These are the public hearings in this governing board's proceedings for community facilities district number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. The hearings are to inquire into one, the formation of the CFD and a future annexation area of the CFD, and two, the levy of special taxes in the CFD, and three, the need to incur bonded indebtedness in the CFD to finance the cost of certain proposed facilities. We've been presented with an amended and restated boundary map of the CFD. Does anyone wish to file written protests if so, they must be filed with the clerk now. Okay, action item H, consider approval to adjourn from the regular session to open public hearings in this governing board's proceedings for the formation of the district's community facilities district number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities and Future Annexation Area and for the issuance of bonded and other debt. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Bonilla, a second by Trustee Clements. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with four ayes and one absent. The hearings are now officially opened. To have orderly hearings, we will first have presentations by staff and the consultants about the CFD. After that, we will receive comments and questions and any oral protests from any interested persons. When all comments have been received, the hearings will be closed. Is there a staff report? Yes, there is, uh, Madam President <laughs> Acting. Um, that's too far out. Uh, the purpose of these proceedings is to establish a CFD to finance a new school in neighborhoods A and B, as well as other school support facilities. There are four property owners in the proposed CFD, all of whom have submitted ballots tonight and have expressed support for the CFD. As you may remember, the process requires a number of steps. If you have any questions, our bond counsel, Chris Lynch, over here to my left, 
uh, is in the audience and will be able to answer them. Okay, is there any member of the public who would like to make comments, questions, and protests from the audience? Okay. Action item I, consider approval to close public hearing and return to regular session. I'll entertain a motion. Move to close public hearing and return to regular session. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Clements, a second by Trustee Bonilla. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries with four ayes and one absent. Okay, the governing board may now ask questions to discuss the CFD. Uh, action item J, consider approval of Governing Board Resolution 19-20-09 for formation of the Community Facilities District and Future Annexation Area, Community Facilities District Number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve Governing Board Resolution 19-20-09, formation of Community Facilities District and Future Annexation Area, Community Facilities District Number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Pombo and a second by Trustee Bonilla. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with four ayes and one absent. Roll call vote, please. Matthew Balzarini? Absent. Colin Clements? Aye. Ann Bonilla? Aye. Karen Lempel? Aye. David Pombo? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Action item K, consider approval of Governing Board Resolution 19-20-10, determining necessity to incur bonded and other indebtedness. Community Facilities District number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve Governing Board Resolution 19-20-10, determining necessity to incur bonded and other indebtedness, Community Facilities District Number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Clements and a second by Trustee Bonilla. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four ayes and one absent. Roll call vote, please. Matthew Balzarini? Absent. Colin Clements? Aye. Ann Bonilla? Aye. Karen Pell? Aye. David Pombo? Aye. Action item L, consider approval of Governing Board Resolution 1920-11, calling Special Election Community Facilities District number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve Governing Board Resolution 1920-11, calling Special Election for Community Facilities District number 20. 19-1, Mountain House School Facilities. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Bonilla, a second by Trustee Clements. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four ayes, one absent. Roll call vote, please. Matthew Balzarini? Absent. Colin Clements? Aye. Ann Bonilla? Aye. Karen Lampel? Aye. David Pombo? Aye. At this time, I ask the clerk to open the ballots and announce the results of the election. Apparently this envelope is tougher than I am. This one is a yes. Future note, we need scissors. Yeah. <laughs> it's or, actually a decoration. Or a razor blade. <laughs> And this one <laughs> was double bag. Oh. <laughs> it was on Funk and Wagnall's porch. The suspense is I, killing. I me. dated myself <laughs> with that reference. Another yes.
<laughs> Aren't you glad you're not the clerk? Is one of the <laughs> with a razor blade. This one's triple bagged <laughs> by mathematical progression. I'll be done here in it, at any minute. Another yes. Yes, <clears throat> I am in receipt of four ballots and all are voted yes. The ballot measure passes by the required two-thirds vote. And the results of the election being unanimously in favor of the levy of the special taxes, the establishment of the appropriations limit, and the incurring of bonded indebtedness, we may now proceed with the final actions for the CFD. Action item M, consider approval of governing board resolution 19-20-12, declaring results of special election and directing recording of notice of special tax lien, community facilities district number 2019-1, Mountain House School facilities. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve governing board resolution 19-20-12, declaring results of special election and directing recording of notice of special tax lien community facilities district number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Clements and a second by Trustee Bonilla. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four ayes and one absent. Roll call vote, please. Matthew Balzarini. Absent. Colin Clements. Aye. Ann Bonilla. Aye. Karen Lampel. Aye. David Pombo. Aye. And the motion passes. Action item N, consider approval of governing board resolution 19-20-13, authorizing the issuance and sale of special tax bonds and approving and authorizing related documents and actions. Community Facilities District number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve board resolution 19-20-13, authorizing the issuance and sale of special tax bonds and approving and authorizing related documents and actions. Community Facilities District number 2019-1, uh, Mountain House School Facilities. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trustee Bonilla and a second by Trustee Clements. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four ayes, one absent. Roll call vote, please. Matthew Balzarini? Absent. Colin Clements? Aye. Ann Bonilla? Aye. Karen Lampel? Aye. David Pombo? Aye. Thank you. The board will now consider introduction of an ordinance levying taxes in the CFD. This is often called the first reading of the ordinance. The board will consider adoption of the ordinance, sometimes called the second reading, at our meeting of December 18th, 2019. Action item O, consider approval to introduce an ordinance number 19-20-001 entitled Ordinance of the Governing Board of the Lammersville Joint Unified School District levying special taxes within the Lammersville Joint Unified School District Community Facilities District number 2019-1, Mountain House School Facilities, and waive its full reading. I will entertain a motion to introduce the ordinance and to waive the reading of the full ordinance. Move to approve uh, introduction of the order ordinance 19-20-001, entitled Ordinance of the Governing Board of the Lammersville Joint Unified School District, levying special taxes within the Lammersville Joint Unified School District Community Facilities District 
number 2019-1 Mountain House School Facilities and waive its full reading. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Bonilla and a second by Trustee Pombo. Student provisional vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none, four ayes and one absent. Uh, roll call vote, please. I don't need a roll call vote on that one. Okay. I was right there with you, Madam President. I okay. <laughs> oh, it says it here. Oh, it does. It's I on didn't the have script. a chance to <laughs> I studied this script. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on to it's information. It's an ordinance and not a resolution, is why I believe. Oh, okay. We'll move on to information and discussion items. The first reading of board policies and administrative regulations. Um, is there a staff report on this? Uh, no other than uh, we, this is the, the moment that we take any feedback from the board. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll uh, bring it back to the next board meeting as a second reading. Any comments from the members of the committee? No. I wanted to say thank you once again to mm -hmm. staff for putting together. They did a great packet. They did, um, both Trustee Bunny and I had some questions on a couple of policies. Those were held back um, and will be um, brought forward as a first reading um, at a future board meeting. Thank you. I know this is a lot of work. Any questions on any of those policies? Okay. Moving on to item B, positive behavior interventions and supports mindfulness. Report. I'd like to ask uh, Associate Superintendent Harrison to come up to uh, introduce this topic. Good evening, Interim Board President Lampel, Trustees, Dr. Nicholas. Uh, so I was tasked by the Wellness Committee to come bring some items to the board for a broader uh, presentation and picture. Um, mindfulness is the topic. However, it's hard to present just mindfulness. Uh, we need to present a uh, larger scope picture of what we do in our school district when it comes to um, mental health, and social emotional awareness that we do for our kids. And positive behavior intervention and supports are strewn throughout our school district and school districts throughout California. What are uh, positive behavior intervention and supports? They are actions taken by schools to actively support students who have troubles with behavior, who need time to uh, adjust uh, their social emotional well being, take time to uh, refocus. Uh, maybe have a intervention with an adult that they have a good relationship with uh, and a variety of other tiered supports. So the supports are aligned into three tiers, much like many things we do in education, there's three tiers to PBIS as well. So if you, so if you look at uh, tier one, uh, meets the needs of 80% of our students. So the majority of our students um, can behave, can function in school with the supports that we provide. And the supports that we provide in general are clear behavioral expectations for all of our students. Uh, social skills for our students are often taught overtly. Um, students and adults reinforce appropriate behavior um, and that develops a connectedness between an adult and the student so that when the student is having troubles behaving or understands that they're getting to a point where they may get in trouble, they can go talk to an adult that they have a connection with. And then this leads to restorative practices. Restorative practices are when we train students to make amends for actions that they may have taken that have hurt the feelings or, or have um, had a poor effect on the school environment. Now, when you talk about social skills, we have a, a program called Peaceful Play Playgrounds that is implemented at Altamont School. They did an analysis of their data and their, uh, their discipline outcomes at their school site, and they realized that they had a lot of problems on the playground uh, in a variety of grade levels. So what they did is they brought in peaceful playgrounds. They adjusted some of the um, architecture of their uh, playground activities, and then they overtly taught behaviors at the school site. What's appropriate, what's not? Here's where you stand in line. Here's how you play tetherball. Here's the rules we're gonna follow. Here's where you uh, stand in line when you're finished, you go here. And they overtly taught behaviors that were appropriate on the playground. Well, they have anecdotally have had improvement in their discipline on the playground since they started the, with the pilot of this program. Um, 
that's one of the examples of a tier one intervention that we're using currently. Tier two interventions uh, meet the needs of five to 15% of our students. So these are targeted supports for students that need some, some extra time or need some um, extra norms for their behavior. Uh, Self-regulation can be overtly taught. Check in, check out with the teacher. Social skills groups, which we do throughout our school district. Uh, routines to support uh, social emotional regulation, which is where mindfulness comes in. And then restorative practices are on there as well. So when you talk about self-regulation at Bethany, we have a sensory wall that was put in last year. And they use that for students that are uh, in need of refocusing. So at a time when a student just is wiggling in their seat and they just can't control themselves anymore, a teacher might send the student out to, to go use the sensory wall. And they go out and it takes about two minutes. They go out and they do the activity, come back into the classroom, they've refocused, and they're ready to learn again. So it's just another intervention to help students with their in-class uh, behaviors. Tier 3 supports. Oops. Tier three supports meet one to 5% of our student population. This is intensive individualized supports, uh, early intervention and prevention uh, for problem situations. So if you have a student that has repeated behaviors that they have troubles monitoring or controlling, you uh, as a school and as an administration, you try to put in supports to prevent the behaviors before they occur. Instruction is provided to replace the behaviors. You put in formal strategies to reward the desired behavior um, so that if the um, undesired behavior occurs, you can put uh, interventions in place to remedy those behaviors. Safety routines, and then obviously intensive family and agency coordination usually occurs when you get to a tier three support. So let me go back to tier two. So um, mindfulness really falls under the routines to support social emotional regulation. Mindful, mindfulness is a process that can be used in a classroom to implement um, breathing techniques, uh, calming techniques, often used during passing time or when a teacher is going to transition from one activity to another. Uh, it's an opportunity to refocus the student's mind and get them ready for different learning. It is also uh, can be used in, in the classroom setting to um, have students self-regulate. And often there's a, a location in the classroom where students can go and uh, refocus themselves and self-regulate by doing a simple activity like blowing a fan or playing with a, a, a squishy ball or things like that. Refocus themselves, self-regulate, and then come back into the full classroom setting. So um, Cheryl Sims and Shannon uh, Pat Patton, or Payton, sorry. Thank you, Patton, uh, from the Health Empowerment Series. Uh, came and gave a presentation at the Wellness Committee. And one of the things they brought forward was this idea of mindfulness. And we have three schools that are interested in piloting mindfulness in one of their classrooms to see how it works with their students. Um, what I have um, asked of the schools is, if we're going to pilot, pilot with a, with a teacher, a single teacher that is actively engaged or interested in, in mindfulness. And that way we have um, participation in, in not only with the adult, uh, but with the team that comes in and works with the teacher. So Cheryl and Shannon in the, the health empowerment group would come in and support the teacher physically in the classroom. So the idea is that the teacher doesn't lose teaching time or teach, uh, their planning time or their classroom time if there is a situation where a student needs time to remove themselves from a situation. The em health empowerment group would step in, pull the student aside, deliver strategies, student goes back to learning. Um, the tier two intervention is something that we can try out, I think at a small level to see if it works in the classroom. And uh, it, as it progresses throughout the school, world, school year, just like peaceful playgrounds and the other things that we've implemented, I think we can kind of discern if it'll work with our student population, with our teachers and how it may work in the classroom setting uh, for our schools. So. As of right now, we have three principals that are interested in piloting and trying it out at their school site. That is, any questions? Yes. <laughs> is this um, 
I'm not familiar too much, and I apologize because I am on the wellness committee, but I was ill of the, I had a work uh, conflict at the day of the meeting. So um, the health empowerment group, are they gonna use a specific curriculum or just different techniques? They have a curriculum, and they have both. They have a okay. curriculum and they have strategies that they can use in the classroom. Okay. And is this only gonna work for the students K-8 or is it something that potentially could work at the high school level? Well, I think it could work at all grade levels. Right. But initially, we would start at the at a K eight classroom. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to say. Okay. Yeah. So the 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 schools that are interested in piloting have they identified teachers? I'm curious about grade levels. They have not. Okay. I, I we haven't gone that far. I, I've asked for interest based on the presentation. They were at the presentation, mm -hmm. and that's as far as we've gone. So it it sounded to me like for the pilot, there would be additional resources provided that if we decided we want a larger pro I mean I I look at a pilot as you try it out to see if you want to do it on a larger scale those resources wouldn't be available on a larger scale um, I think that we should take the process slowly and figure out how it works in our school sites and I think that the health empowerment group they're looking at their own organization and uh, looking for grants to help support because there's no monetary cost to our school district it's it's all uh, oh. paid for by that group okay. Way to uh, bury all the, the all the tools all the resources the, all the training they've attended mm -hmm. um it, it, it's all provided by them as a support mechanism to the teacher in the classroom um so to level up i think that they would probably need to get some grant funding and train some staff and we would go through that journey with them okay I understand right now better they now. Have the funding to support three classrooms? Is that what it we is? We haven't put a number on the classrooms okay. yet. Um, I think we, it's all going to be who we can talk to and, and the fit, I think, when we get going mm -hmm. to really uh, make sure that it, it fits with our program and fits with our timeline and fits with our students and mm -hmm. et cetera. <clears throat> I realize it's very early in the process, but you said there were three principals interested. Would we look at potentially piloting it at three campuses or choose one of those three and pilot it at one campus to begin with? I think we should do the same thing we've done with other programs and pilot it at one campus with one principal so that we have, it's really a control group, right? We're testing to see how it works out. And uh, it, it, if it's working really well, it'll grow naturally, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. I'm very familiar, as Ann probably is, with PBIS. Okay. So. Um, and it's, it's very difficult for classroom teachers to implement some of the things with PBIS when they've got 25 other kids that are, you know, their attention. So to have extra support, I, I think it's a great idea to pilot it. I, I agree, and, and I've done a lot of, I've actually seen a lot of the research on the value of mindfulness in the classroom and uh, used it actually in my own classroom from time to time, and it's been very beneficial, so I think it's an excellent idea. Really will help a lot of students. I could say one more thing, the whole idea of replacement behaviors, they teach the replacement behaviors and the coping mm -hmm. so that the behaviors don't occur. So the whole idea is it's occur, yeah. these interventions occur before the behaviors happen. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we all know how the real world works. Sometimes the behavior, behaviors happen and then you have to teach the procedure. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's the benefit of the, the whole idea of mindfulness. So is there a parent component to this program? The parents would be, need to be notified in the classroom setting, whichever classroom we start in. We would want to make sure that we got parent uh, permission and, and they knew what was going on and we communicated with them very clearly. So that's like the permissions and stuff. My question was really as the, the, these folks work with our kids who need to redirect, sometimes the redirection isn't quite enough. And at what, do, do, do they have a component to get the parents involved and, and making suggestions? And I think that we can make sure that does occur because those interventions probably would help at home as well mm -hmm. and those mm -hmm. strategies would help at home as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I do believe we can make that a part of it. Okay, great. Wonderful. Wonderful idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to calendar. Tuesday, November 19th, there is the District Advisory Committee at 6 o'clock. On Wednesday, November 20th, the Safety Committee at 3.30. Tuesday, December 3rd, we have the Education Committee at 6.30. Wednesday, December 11th, 
Wellness Committee meeting at 3.30. <clears throat> and Wednesday, December 18th, is our next governing board meeting at 7 o'clock. And Thursday, December 19th, is a facilities committee meeting at 6.30. I will entertain a motion to adjourn to closed session where we will be discussing student discipline and other confidential matters, education code sections 35146, 48900, and 48912B. Student discipline and other confidential matters, education code sections 35146, 48900, and 48912B. Move to See, adjourn. I'm not done. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready, though. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pombo. Uh, student discipline and other confidential matters, education code sections 35146-48900 and 48912B. D, consider approval of long-term leave of absence for certificated employee. E, conference with labor negotiators, governing code 54, sorry, I lost my eyes, 54957.6. Public Employee Discipline Dismissal Release Complaint, Government Code 54957, and Conference with Real Property Negotiators, Government Code 54956.8. You're on, Mr. Combo. <laughs> Move to adjourn to closed session. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Pombo, a second from Trustee Clements, student provisional vote. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are now in closed session. Thanks, everybody. Finger. I'm not doing that. There's a camera. <laughs> OK. In closed session, the board took the following actions. Closed session item A, student discipline and other confidential matters. Education code sections 35146, 48900, and 48912B. Board took action on a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Bonilla to approve staff recommendation for expulsion of student number 19-20-02 for the 2019-2020 school year by the following vote. Four ayes, one absent. Closed session item B, student discipline and other confidential matters, education code sections 35146, 48900, and 48912B. The board took action on a motion by Trustee Bonilla and seconded by Trustee Pombo to approve staff recommendation for stipulated agreement for suspended expulsion of student number 192003 through May 22nd, 2020 by the following vote, four ayes, one absent. Uh, closed session item C, student discipline and other confidential matters, education code sections 35146, 48900, and 48912B. The for board took action on a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Bonilla to approve staff recommendation of readmission for student number 18-19-05 for the 19-20 school year by the following vote four ayes and one absent. Um, closed session item D, consider approval of partial leave of absence for certificated employee number 130398 from October 24th, 2019 through May 22nd, 2020. The board took action on a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Bonilla to approve the long-term leave of absence for certificated employee number 130398 from 102419 to 52220 by the following vote. Four ayes, one absent. We are moved to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>